and how they're left behind. A lot of this damage, of course, here's the radar loop. Uh, we're looking, uh, working on some rainfall totals for you, but this is what happened. I want to kind of dissect it again and then show you what happened and why it didn't get quite as strong. Also, some information as far as what tomorrow looks like from the Storm Prediction Center. So we'll pause at 155. There's the center of that storm. Normally, the National Weather Service is looking for a hook so they can kind of see what's happening. This happened so fast. There was no really time to issue a thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning or a tornado watch box. When they see these storms bubble up uh, very, very high, you can see down to street level from Clifton Road to Lund Avenue, Sydney Avenue, Pottery Avenue. The tops of these storms were at 10,000 feet. That line indicates 10,000 feet. Had they gone up to 40, 50,000 feet, and if they were coming across, the National Weather Service would have said, hey, we've got some severe weather going on. We need to issue a tornado watch box, and it would cover the entire area, and there would be a time frame that would say, hey, between this hour and this hour, we could see tornadoes. Or if they saw rotation in the radar or somebody on the ground, a storm spotter on the ground called them specifically and said, I see a potential for a funnel, then they would issue a tornado warning and you've got seconds to get to a basement. This is another thing to be aware of. If this happens again, what do you do? You want to get to the basement if you have one. If you don't have one, get to the center of your home. Uh, perhaps that's a bathroom. If you can get into the bathtub, it's always great to cover yourself with pillows or a mattress. Take a look at this. How often does this happen? A storm report over western Washington. This is what we typically see across the eastern plains. There it is right over us. And that shows the time of the report coming in at about 150 tornado. Uh, this is the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. They're looking at how much instability is in the atmosphere. How likely are we able going to get some severe weather tomorrow? And look from the coast all the way to the east side. It looks like we've got a marginal chance to see some severe weather through the day tomorrow. Reason? Well, we've still got some instability in the atmosphere. Here's the radar right now. Look at the lightning strikes coming on through. Behind it, you've got those pieces of uh, popcorn-like looking storms. Uh, as far as storm predictions or storm strength, I want to get right to meteorologist Jordan Steele because this is something we've been watching as well, right? Yeah. We're talking about they have to go out tomorrow, right. look at the damage, and determine how big or how strong this yeah, is. Yeah, it's totally different than a hurricane. You know, Absolutely. the way we measure hurricanes is by the eye of the storm, right? You get the wind speeds coming in periodically. With these, we can't technically. Uh, materialize or measure the wind speeds of that current storm system. So that's why they'll go out tomorrow. Just to give you an idea of what we're looking at uh, here in Western Washington, we've never seen anything bigger than an EF3. And of course, we are getting some reports that uh, maybe this storm system was that size. It all depends on what happens as they go out and uh, issue it tomorrow. Just to give you an idea of how much we average for the state, two and a half tornadoes for the entire season. Most of those in Eastern Washington, like Craig talked about in December point. 01 or 0.1 technically. So uh, not common as you know, but it does look like we've had a few. Here's that EF3. This happened back in 1969. Some of the bigger ones, one of the biggest one we've seen. That was December 12th, okay? Very isolated, but big nonetheless. EF2 happened in 1986. There was another EF2 in 1970. There was another EF2 in 1965. Remember, we had a couple of seasons ago, we had one down in the DuPont area that we captured on video. And uh, this is a look at some of those tornadoes across Puget Sound. Uh, hard to see here, but just to give you an idea that they do happen throughout the year, just not all that common. So Craig touched on it just a little bit. This shows you that tomorrow, since the storm system is still technically overhead, we got a general thunderstorm potential around I-5 corridor pointing west just because the instability is still here. I'm thinking things will eventually calm down going into tomorrow, which is good. We'll get a bit of a break, but then a new storm will be on the horizon tomorrow evening. And of course,